Welcome everyone. My name is Marla and I'm a literacy activist. I'm, I'm running for um, Denver School Board, Denver District School Board at large. And I wanted to talk to you a little bit about phonics and why I'm running um, in three minutes. Hopefully I can do it in three minutes. So this is a test run. Um, and first of all, um, what I learned as a book lady is is comes from this book and his information in here he gives statistics and yes it's a little bit old but if you track literacy over the years from 2015 on if you go backwards to when I graduated actually um, and you track it you come to realize that this hasn't really changed and it's gotten worse um, first point in fact is every child starts school wanting to learn to read but by the time they get to high school about 12 percent plus or minus five um actually plus or minus no minus five no plus or minus five um actually uh, continue reading and continue for pleasure and and because they want to um, not very many high schoolers continue reading for pleasure um, when they graduate. Um, so his statistics is like this. In the National Reading Report Card um, that was done and a, a while back, I think it was in 2015, um, they found that very different attitudes and behaviors um, as students aged. So they, they develop differently. So when you're in fourth grade, only 54% read uh, something for pleasure. When you're in eighth grade, only 30% read something for pleasure daily. Um, when you're in 12th grade, only 19% read anything for pleasure. It's gone down, it's actually 12% um, and maybe even lower um, today. Um, you'd have to go and redo the research for current for 21, 2021. Uh, but this is, um, this is an older book of an older version, um, which is still good. The Kaiser Family Foundation 2010 Longitude study of eight to 18 years of age found that 53% read no books in a given day, 65% read no magazines, and 75% read no newspapers. So what are they reading? Are they all on their computers? I mean, on their iPhones? Texting? So they're reading each other's texts. Is that what they're doing? <laughs> um, in the Bureau of Labor Statistics survey in 2010, young adults between 15 and 19, the largest concentration of high school and college students reported spending 12 minutes a day reading versus two 23 hour watching two to 23 hours watching television think about it we have a hundred percent interest in kindergarten but they lose but more than three quarters uh, of, of of our potential lifetime readers um, are lost by the time they uh, reach um, 18. Um, and it's true when I go and I sell my books at a vendor event, all the high schoolers and the 20 year olds, they just pass me by as if, you know, they don't really care. The books matter to them. There, there's no value in books. Um, so very few high schoolers really buy a book. Um, and let me tell you what's really uh, striking. Um, even in the Latino population, most do not read after fourth grade. Um, so that that's and what what's even more um, astonishing is that um, a lot of Latino families, uh, not not all of them. Um, when when I'm in the setting of a Hispanic community, um, a lot of them give their children the iPhone 
to entertain themselves while they're talking or doing something. Um, and when I tell them, don't, you shouldn't, you should really limit your kids, they just look at me like, are you telling me what to do? Huh? Huh? <laughs> so, um, it's pretty bad. Um, so this book is really good, and this is why I stress the importance of phonics and why phonics matters. And according to the NEA uh, book, The Trojan Horse, for why we're not literate anymore, um, according to that book, um, it, it's going to take going communist in this nation for the communist to bring back phonics. Um, if you look at Latin America, the NEA has been chipping away at their society for over a hundred years. And um, whenever a senator wants to put a stop to one of the communist uh, dictators in uh, Latin America, the NEA is the one behind um, stopping those senators from uh, uh, stopping a dictatorship or a, um, or a, uh, communist takeover. Um, the NEA make, is the biggest, fattest special interest group hindering our, our potential in America. And I am, every time the NEA, every time a politician gets money from a special interest group, it's really from either the NEA or the CFR. They're the ones, so let's say we believe in this. As a taxpayer, as individuals, we vote for different um, representatives. Well, the rep well, they have a conflict of interest whenever they have dark money. This is the dark money. Dark money comes from the NEA. Dark money, okay? So when, when you hear these, these Democrats calling out, oh, follow the dark money, follow the dark money. Well, guess what? The dark money is special interest groups like the NEA, which is like cl number one next to no interest group in America that actually gives the most money to our Washington congressmen. And those congressmen put the money into the schools to freaking dis-educate uh, kids in being illiterate. Okay? That's pretty much what it is. We need to. So, so I'm running, and the first thing I notice is this: if an individual gives money to my campaign, they can give more than a thousand dollars to my campaign. But the NEA can give freaking seventy-five thousand dollars to a single individual. Hello, hello. Is there something wrong there? In the, you know how hard it is to collect money from people? It's very hard. So most of the candidates that are running have over $20,000 from the NEA. Do you think that they are compromised? Yes, there's a huge conflict of interest. Because now the NEA gets to dictate what the curriculum is in each and every state and county and local community. They're the ones behind equity and collectivism. Well, guess what collectivism is? It's communism, okay? If, if most of these kids, they don't understand what our American system is. We are a constitutional republic. We are a constitutional republic and we consent to laws, not men. That's why illegal immigration is wrong. Illegal immigration is wrong because the illegals are already telling us that they don't care about our laws. And leaving the borders wide open over in Del Rio, that's where the problem is. They cross the rivers. Okay? Is, is a sign that our nation is sick from the top down. And they're not protecting us American, legal, legal citizens. 
lawful citizens. If you're illegal, you entered illegally and you're here illegally and we're giving to you from our money. I am sorry. My family came here too, but they're lawful. But every time you put another representative with big, dark money from the NEA or the CFR, those are the biggest too. Okay, they're the closest to none. Yeah, the oil industry gives them some money, but they're not the biggest. The ones causing our kids to come out as walking militantly militant activists are the ones that are being raised in public schools. The NEA is destroying Americans. The progressives are destroying Americans, American way of life. The progressives, every time you hear a progressive, they don't believe in the constitution because if they did, they wouldn't take money from the NEA. Progressives are, have ruined our education system, period. Progressives since the 1900s have ruined our education system. There is no way in hell I'm calling myself a progressive. I am not a progressive. I am a constitutionalist. And I'm not a rhino either. And I'll stand up to rhinos and leftists. I know there are Democrats who believe in the Constitution. I know there are a ton of Republicans who believe in the Constitution. But we have a small minority in each party that are destroying this country. A small minority. Tyranny of the minority is what Madison really meant. When a small minority dictate for the majority, that's tyranny. Anyways, so it does matter, okay? It matters a lot what you are teaching in schools. Critical race theory, this is my answer to you. As a homeschool mom, I believe in teaching ancient history, modern history, medieval history, the good, the bad, so that we do not repeat it. But if you're going to teach little isolated points in history, then how are you supposed to connect the dots if you don't even know ancient history, medieval history, modern history, and you don't know the good and the bad of, of each generation, of each point in history? How do you know where to go, where to start, if you don't know the timeline? You know, it took me years to learn the timeline. Once I figured out the timeline, I started connecting. But they don't want you to connect. They don't. They don't want you to know that in America, a small minority fought the tyrant king and won. They don't want you to know that. They don't. They won. The king was a tyrant. The English king was a tyrant. And our founding fathers... They, they were well-read, they were brilliant, they looked at every system of government there is in the whole world ever was. And they didn't like democracy because that's a weak system. We're not a democracy. They didn't like a republic because a republic by itself turns into a democracy. That's also weak. They did not like a monarchy because they had just fought the monarchy. So what they gave us in America is a mixed system of government. A mixed system of government.
They gave us a constitutional republic whereby we, the people, the little guy from the bottom up, consent to laws, not men. We do not consent to any one person in office. We consent to the laws. And if a law, according to um, Article 6, or 5, no, 6, Article 6 of the Constitution, if a law, any law, is contrary to any of these premises in the Constitution, it is your right and your duty not to obey it. And guess what? We are having mandates that are not law. You don't have to obey it because it, 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 uh, it goes contrary to your right to freedom. Freedom to choose your health. Freedom to choose what is best for you. These representatives do not know what is best for you. And no, don't be telling me that wearing, we already wear a seatbelt. We're already taking vaccines. No, no. Did you know only 40% of Americans take the flu shot every year? It's not mandatory. And you could get a freaking exemption from it too. Because vaccines don't work for everybody. Vaccines hurt some people more than others. And it's just like a, a it's almost like a, taking a vaccine. When they make a vaccine, it's not a cure for anything. You can still get it. They're really shooting from the hip and saying, well, we're going to try this. And see if it works. You know, it's really your body, your health, you putting food into your mouth, the best foods into your mouth. Anyways, uh, this was my soapbox. But I really care about the importance of phonics. I really care about the importance of teaching thinking skills to these kids. Because it, the, more, the less these kids can think, the more mentally ill they will be. That's a correlation. <laughs> I, when I'm looking at things and I'm like, huh, you know what? These kids didn't know how to think for themselves. Of course they're going to be freaking depressed. They don't know how to freaking get out of a rut. Of a rut. They don't know how to think it through. They're lazy. And they can't even read. Or don't want to read. But anyways... Vote for me, because I stand, I stand behind the Constitution, and I know the NEA is going to hate me, because I do not stand behind the NEA. Yes, they, they used to be a good professional organization, but if you go to their website, they have a little, a little tab that says, Packed Donations. You could donate there for political donations and those donations go to feed our politicians and every time a politician takes their donation they are compromised because if they don't do what the nea says the nea will ruin you completely destroy you and discredit you that's what they're about they're about discrediting you and ruining you they don't care about you all they care about is being in power and running the show and ruining this country and turning it into a communist takeover. Signing off. Until next time.